11 o'clock Southern California, this is Channel 2 Action News with Penny Griego and Jose Sanders. Channel 2 Action News Nightcast. Good evening, everyone. Here's what's happening. Opening night of the movie Boys in the Hood is marked by an outbreak of violence in the Los Angeles area. The first incident happened tonight outside Man's Chinese Theater when a group of men attacked another young man. The assailants pummeled the victim with their fists and then took off running. Paramedics treated the injured youth as police swarmed through the region, making sure things didn't get out of control. And right now, sheriff's deputies have surrounded a parking garage at Universal City Cineplex Odeon Theaters after an apparent shootout between rival gang members. We have an action news crew on the scene, and we will bring you an update from that crew. Actually, we're going to bring it to you right now. Jody Baskerville is live at the scene. Jody? You're on. Well, the trouble that theater owners feared would follow the opening of the movie Boys in the Hood is now a reality. I'm here in Universal City where shots have been fired between two rival gangs. One person has been injured and four people are in custody right now. But the most important thing police are concerned with is the fact that one of the gunmen is on the loose. They have met mounted a massive campaign to try and find him. You can see all of the police cars are searching. They've got a helicopter up in the sky looking for this gunman. They have evacuated all of the theaters and they are keeping all of the media back. Now for those of you who are not familiar with the movie, Boys in the Hood is about growing up in South Central Los Angeles. It deals with gang life. Although the writer-director John Singleton says it has a very strong anti-gang message. But this is why a couple of theaters have already canceled out on showing this film because they feared the violence that has erupted here tonight. As I said before, one person has been shot. We think there might be two because we have seen the paramedics down the hill working on somebody in an ambulance. They have arrested four people. There are several gang members that are face down on the concrete. That's also down on the hill. And right now, as I said, police have fanned out all over Universal City looking for the armed gunmen. They are up in the parking structures. That's where we're told the shooting broke out. It did not, as far as we know, happen inside the theater, but it was during the 9 o'clock showing of the movie Boys in the Hood. That's all we have right now. I don't have IFB, so I cannot hear you. I'm going to toss it back to the desk unless I get another cue. Back to you. All right. Thank you very much for that report, Jerry. And it looks like they're making her keep her lights off as extra yeah. precautions there. Here's a story that's just in. There is a tense situation in an El Monte neighborhood tonight. It was evacuated while the sheriff's bomb squad went about disarming a booby-trapped household. An explosion rocked a duplex, and explosive experts later found three other pipe bombs in the residence. A woman apparently triggered the blast. The woman told the El Monte police officers that she and her husband had been having marital problems, and she'd come back to their residence tonight to retrieve some property. And upon opening the front door, the explosion occurred. The woman apparently was not hurt. Her husband, identified as Jean Rosencrantz, was arrested on suspicion of using an explosive device with intent to injure. An earthquake rocked the coast of Oregon tonight. It was a strong one, 6.6 .6 on the Richter scale. This quake was centered 70 miles off the southern Oregon coast, about 120 miles northwest of Eureka. In fact, it was felt throughout the state of Oregon, and in some parts of California, we are told that chandeliers swayed on the second floor of the state capitol in Sacramento. That's 300 miles away from the epicenter. But there are no reports tonight of any damage or injuries. It was a day of claims and counterclaims. Tonight, only one thing is certain. The future of Police Chief Daryl Gates is still up in the air, despite assurances from a number of city leaders that Gates will retire at the end of the year. Jody Baskerville reports everyone is talking except the chief. How about you guys coming to, to Los Angeles and joining me in the city council meeting? I'd love to have you there. Hey. Police Chief Daryl Gates couldn't help but smile. For the first time in weeks, he was facing a crowd that wasn't hostile. Of course, all this warmth happened to be coming from a predominantly white audience in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Gates told reporters afterwards it would be up to the people, not the Christopher Commission, to decide his fate. Uh, there's a need uh, to deal with the, with the uh, issue of the selection of the chief of police, how that's going to be done, and the tenure of the chief of police. 
That's one of the recommendations. That has to be submitted to the voters. And uh, until that's submitted to the voters, I'm not about to leave. Chief Gates arrived back in Los Angeles, minus the good humor and his usual gift of gab. He avoided reporters at the airport and at his home. I avoided all the people at, uh, at the airport. The silent treatment may be a result of what happened earlier today, when Mayor Tom Bradley and L.A. City Council members John Ferraro and Joel Wax seemingly put words in the chief's mouth about a pending retirement he apparently knew nothing about. On the basis of all that I've heard from the various parties, uh, it's clear enough to me that Chief Gates will retire as of the end of this year. It's important that we, we heal the wounds that are over this, this city. Uh, there are a lot of things in the commission report that the chief will be implementing immediately. Uh, we've asked him to do that as fast as possible. Chief Gates. Certain because the police commission could look outside the LAPD for Gates' successor. Well, cops on the beat reacted to today's announcement with support for Chief Gates. Fair at Universal Studios as a result of a controversial movie there. Jody? Yes, Bob, it was a very controversial movie. The movie's called Boys in the Hood. Several theaters around town decided not to show the, the movie because they were afraid that violence would break out just like it has tonight here in Universal City. During the shooting of uh, Boys in the Hood, during the movie, Shooting broke out in the parking structure. Joining me now is John Karras. He is a moviegoer. He came here to see The Terminator, and he, he got a lot more than that. John, tell me what was the scene in the parking lot. Scene in the parking lot, people were running all over the place, uh, gunshots, gunfire. Uh, people were stuck in the parking lot. Uh, we couldn't get out. Now, you were trapped in your right. car. Yes, we were all trapped in a car for about approximately 45 minutes to an hour. Did you see, uh, what did you see? Did you see any of the gunmen? Did you just hear the shots? No, we came very close to the gunshots. Uh, that's one thing I can tell you. There was uh, many, many, many gun, gunshots all over the place, and we were, it looked like we were in a line of fire, and we just hoped that we got out of there. Now, what about the police? When did, how did they get you out of there? Well, after beeping for about 15, 20 minutes, everybody started honking the horn for a good 15, 20 minutes, and then they finally let us go. It must have been a very frightening experience. I'm glad that you're all right. Thank you for joining us, John, very much. As you can see, it was pandemonium inside the parking structure that's right next to the theater complex. There's no telling how many people were trapped in their cars. Several movies go on at this complex on a daily basis. This was during the 9 o'clock showing of Boys in the Hood, which I said before is a movie dealing with gang violence in South Central Los Angeles. And actually, and the ironic thing about this is it is a a movie with a very strong anti-gang message. Uh, reporting live from Universal City, I'm Jody Baskerville, Channel 2 Action News Nightcast. Jody, I know some theaters were beefing up their security because of this movie. Do you have any idea if they were doing that there at Universal Studios? Yes, Penny, exactly. Because of the fear that violence would break out in this showing of this movie, many of the theaters decided to beef up security, including this one. However, the security was not enough. Uh, the violence Blockbuster Video is a deal you can really see. Left the movie theater uh, through the exits and went to a nearby parking structure. Uh, deputies found out later on that two people were uh, Deputies found out later on that two people were shot inside that theater as a result of those gunshots. Uh, they were taken to St. Joseph's Hospital in Burbank, and an additional third victim was found later on in the parking structure, but it was unknown at this time where he or she was shot. Sergeant, where are the rest of the theater go goers? Where are they? Well, there's a large group of people inside the parking structure who are being let out in small groups for both their safety and ours as well. And there's a group of patrons inside the theater who have been detained after they've been searched for weapons and allowed to sit back down inside the theater. Do we still have an armed and dangerous gunman on the loose, uh, Sergeant? We don't know that. Uh, nobody's been arrested this time, and we really haven't received any information from witnesses as to who uh, was responsible for these shootings. Okay, thank you, sir, for joining us. I appreciate your time. Okay, that's the update, Penny, Bob. Three people wounded, somebody probably still on the loose, armed, and theater goers are still up there in the theater waiting to be escorted down by police. Reporting live from Universal City, I'm Jody Baskerville, Channel 2 Action News Nightcast. All right, thank you very much, Jody. And unfortunately, Universal Studios was not the only site of a disturbance at the movie Boys in the Hood. Three people were shot outside a movie theater in Upland tonight. There was also a disturbance at Man's Chinese Theater right here in Hollywood. And West, we sure thank you all for joining us. Thank you, and we'll see you tomorrow. Good night.
what a difference a day makes. Here's what we're working on now for Action News Nightcast. A possible high-level shakeup in the L.A. Police Department. Chief Gates reassigns one of his top cops. It is a place where movers and shakers wheel and deal. A Beverly Hills landmark celebrates its golden anniversary. Those stories and the late news at 11 o'clock and Michael Tuck's perspective as well. Mike. Jim, tonight we have some questions. Should actress Demi Moore, who is pregnant, pose nude in a magazine? Should Clarence Thomas, who's a U.S. Supreme Court nominee, be criticized for smoking pot? And should Daryl Gates, whose resignation was recommended by the Christopher Commission, be the one to carry out the commission recommendation? Some thoughts on those subjects and who knows what else on Perspective on Nightcast. Trisha. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine. Listen, talk about waking up high and dry. Oh, and then there's this story about the Coast Guard fishing a man out of Lake Michigan today, a guy who said he'd been floating around in the lake since going to a party a week ago. This 24-year-old German exchange student told the Coast Guard he went to a party last weekend, decided to go out on the lake on this inflatable air mattress. There it is, and he passed out. When Dirk Steen woke up, he was in the middle of the lake. Steen says thunderstorms on the lake capsized his mattress several times, and he drank lake water to survive. He was semi-conscious when found, weak and dehydrated. He's now in stable condition. And now for a return to family values after that brief excursion into Lake mm. Michigan, <laughs> an unforgettable mother and child story. Workers at a zoo in Syracuse are teaching a 14-year-old Asian elephant named Romani how to care for her new baby. Romani was raised in an elephant orphanage and therefore has never seen the bonding process between mother and calf. Now both are at the mercy of humans, who we think you'll agree, have a mixed record of success in child rearing. But after some early troubles with nursing, the two-day-old calf is said to be making steady progress, and it is an experience which Mama will remember forever. Won't she? Wait till the baby gets to be a teenager. <laughs> in Lake Michigan. Yeah, that's all for us. We're glad that you joined us tonight. Please stay tuned now for the CBS Evening News. And before we leave you, another look at today's historic solar eclipse. Channel 2 Action News voted two Emmy Awards for Best Newscasts.